Once you put your columns in there, the very next step you probably want to do is put some beams in that span between the columns. And here's how we do that. There's a beam tool. We're going to specify some beam properties. Primarily, we're going to choose the type of the beam and its dimensions. Okay, we can specify the placement plane. That's the height at which to put the beam. We have to be a little bit careful when we're putting beams because depending upon which view we're looking at, we have this issue of in a floor plan view, it's going to put it below our feet versus above our heads. In a ceiling plan view, it's going to put it above our heads. What tends to happen that's confusing about beams is if I want to put the beams that are supporting level two, they're kind of above my head in level one, what I need to do is go to level two and put them in there and it'll put them below the floor level. It's a little backwards that way. Or I can do it in 3D, which I tend to like to do because then I can control that more accurately. So watch out for that one. There's this whole issue of beams. And the most common thing that happens with beams is you put them in and you just can't see them for some reason. It's usually because they're above your head. So if you're in a floor plan view and they're above your head, just switch to a ceiling plan view. Or even better, you often just go to a 3D view and find it and figure out how high it is or how low it is and then adjust it to elevation based on that. But it's really common when you put in beams that you may just get them in the wrong place. So I'm going to go back over here. What I'm going to do is go back to the Home tab, and I'll choose the Beam tool. Now, if you're in Revit architecture, okay, the Beam tool shows up in this little structure subsection. Okay? If you're in Revit structure, which you can be doing this all in Revit structure just as easily, okay, the beams are front and center. They're very prominent because you're working with columns and beams and structural slabs and things like that as your primary element. It's the same tool. It's just sort of two different tools. They organize the way the tools are presented in the palettes a little bit differently. For now, let's just work in structure, or excuse me, architecture. Okay, next time, when, or not next, actually a week from now, when we go through and we start applying some loads, we'll open this very same file in Revit Structure instead. And Structure has the ability to put loads and boundary conditions. And no, you aren't doing that. In fact, even for your project in Assignment 4, I'm going to show you how to put structural elements in. It's not at all my intent that you're going to completely model the structures. You, know, you don't have to do that for Assignment 4. The intent is really just to show you how to put the structural elements in so for some key areas where you want to put some beams or columns, you can. You have that in your toolbox, but no one's asking you to go through and model the complete structure. Yeah, that would be, it would be much, much bigger. No, you're not doing that yet. Yes, actually, you won't, you won't be doing that in this class. How about that? If you take, there's some good classes next quarter I can recommend that you do that, but it's, uh, we're not doing that this quarter. Okay, we'll go ahead and choose beam, the beam tool. Beams, of course, have sizes in the type selector. We can stick with these existing sizes, or we can go ahead and load in some new sizes from the library. I'm not going to load them in right now. If we did go ahead and load them, you could actually get like the complete steel catalog if you want that. I tried, but maybe I didn't click on the eh, let's see. How it, okay, you're going to talk me into going down there. You go to the framing Structural framing. Let me go to steel as a starting point. Yeah, there's, concrete doesn't have very many. In, this, in the steel wide flanges, there's actually the whole steel catalog in here. So you can choose a few sizes that you want to load, and then they'll be available for you. Don't load too many different things. If you load an awful lot of things in there, just your model gets heavy and it starts slowing down a little bit just because it's taking more memory to kind of manage all those objects. Okay, but we're going to go through and put in some concrete beams. Let me go ahead and put in these 16 by 32s. I'm going to do it in the 3D snapping way. I kind of like that. When I do 3D snapping, it sort of overrides everything else because I can just snap to the top of those things. I can just snap to the top of those things. So choose the top. When you get to the top of the column, See how it sort of gets that little pink mark right at the top there? It says we're on the end point. So I'm just snapping away. Okay. Watch out as you're working. In fact, that last one I think is a little bit off. I think that's a little off. Let me rotate it and see. When you start working in 3D, if you get too far oblique, now it's actually okay. If you get sort of too far out of plane, it's actually hard to do things in 3D, and you might get things a little bit inaccurately. So you might have to rotate your view around a little bit. Okay, 
So you can go ahead and place your beams this way. Now, as usual, you can go ahead and place all these beams individually, and that would be okay, but, you know, that would kind of get tedious after a while, so you might want a quicker way to go through and place those things. So let's talk about how you can do that. If I want to go through and place beams, but I want to use one of the quickie methods, like on grids, you'll see that it's not available to me in the 3D view. That's because in the 3D view, you can't see the grids. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do is go to one of the 2D views. And if I want to place those beams on level 2, okay, because they're supporting level 2, what I'm going to do is go to the level 2 floor plan. Okay. If you come on in, you can see ever so lightly, those beams are down there. I'm just kind of ghosted out. But at the level two floor plan, I can go through and place some more beams individually by drawing them. Ken, you may like to do it that way. But I'm going to undo that because I'm going to use my shortcut, which is on grids. Okay, so I'll choose on grids. And, you know, I would really like to just put beams along that grid line. In fact, I'd like to put beams along that grid line too. And what it's going to do, oh, actually what I have to do is control click to get all of them then when I say finish the selection it'll put all those beams in if I go back to 3d you'll see it kind of completed it for the other two rows in the same sense I'm going to go back and go through and do it in the other direction just by choosing the grid lines in that direction too so its rule is that if it's on the grid line and there's two columns it'll try to put a beam between those columns so again, I'll come back over here to level two. I'll say, let's go ahead and put some beams in here. I'll use the on grids. I'll say along that grid. Control click to get that grid. Finish our selection. And before you know it, you got something that looks pretty good. So far so good? Let's go ahead and give you a minute to catch up with that. Now, all these beams that I placed in there, it's not quite exactly the way I want this building to be, so I'm going to make a little few changes. You know, what I want to do is actually in this area right back here, I actually want that to be like a big open atrium. So I'm going to actually take out a few of those columns, or take out a few of those beams, excuse me. I just want that to be a little more open in there. So I'm not going to put a floor plane in that area. Exactly. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it's not at all an accurate model. This model is around longer than the wind casino. <laughs> okay. So you go through, you put your uh, columns in there, you go through and put some beams between there, and we're doing pretty good. This is our basic structural frame. Before we put a floor slab on there, let's go ahead and put just a little more detail in there about the structure, and here's the issue. These bays between the different columns are actually pretty far apart. That's like 25 feet by 35 feet. It's really too far for a single flat plate of concrete to go through and span. We need some intermediate beams in there. Or in, you know, if it was steel, we could put steel uh, open web joists or something like that. If it was wood, we could put some wood joists between there. We very often have the notion of main beams, girders, which are sort of picking up the main loads. Okay? And then smaller beams, or joists as we often call them, that span between those and really carry the floor loads back to the main, main beams. Okay? So there's a similar sort of idea going on here. And where it sort of shows up in Revit is as a beam system. Okay. A beam system is really just a group of beams that all have the same size, that have a very fixed spacing, okay, and a regular pattern to them. Okay. So for the big beams, it doesn't make so much sense to use them that way because they were all rotated in a very special way. But as we go through and put joists between those, okay, they're going to be every four feet, every 16 inches, every six feet. There'll be a very regular pattern to them. So we can use the beam system tool. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. Okay. What I want to do is actually, I'm going to go through and put a beam system inside these bays. Okay, inside each of those different little bays. 
And I can do this in 3D, but to do it in 3D, I need to go through and just give it a little bit of help. What I need to do is, there's always this notion as you're placing things of what the work plane is, or the placement plane. That's where it puts things in 3D. And in general, it's been set to the first floor. As we were placing the beams, we were actually able to snap to the top of those columns so that it, know, it knew that the top of the columns is a good location. What I'm going to do is actually show the work plane. It's over here in the toolbar, or in the ribbon, over on the right-hand side, show work plane. You'll see it actually is down on the first floor level right now. And what I'm actually going to do is raise it up to the second level so that when I place this beam system, we'll be at that level as opposed to being down on the floor. I want them up with me. So I can do that as follows. I'll say, let's set the work plane. I'll bring it up to level two. Say OK. And now it's a little hard to tell, but it's actually on top as opposed to underneath. Okay. The reason I'm doing this again is I want my beam system to be up here, not down on the floor. So what can I do? I will now go through and define a beam system. And you'll find it. It's just right underneath. Okay, here's the beam system. It's right underneath beam. And when I choose beam system, what you're going to do is as follows. You're going to choose the boundary for the beam system, and then you're going to go ahead and fill that in with beams. And you can choose the beam size and what the spacing should be. So to choose the boundary, I can draw the boundary. What I like to do is actually use the Pick Supports tool. That'll let me just pick existing beams. So I can pick a beam, pick a beam. I'm filling in that little area right now. Notice as I pick the beams, one of the beams, the very first one I collected, actually has two parallel lines on the other side of it. Okay? And that's indicating that's the direction that the beams that fill in are going to be parallel to. So as we fill in, these beams will be running in this direction. Okay. Let me say finish that beam system. And we'll make some adjustments to it. Okay. You see I have a bunch of beams. Now, the reason they ran in this direction is, again, because when I placed them, let me grab them by hovering and getting the big uh, collection of purple. Um, edit the boundary. I can, if I want to change the beam direction, I can choose, as opposed to the boundary line, I can say, make that the beam direction. It'll switch it over that way. Other things I can do are, if I grab the beam system, I can actually change the distance. Right now, they're every six feet. I can make them every four feet. Okay. Or I can change the size. Okay. Or even change the type. Make a bunch of steel members in there. Okay. But I can go through and very quickly change them. And the nice thing about beam systems, if you have a very regularly spaced system, it's much better to sort of define them as a system where you can change the properties of all of them as opposed to changing them all independently. Okay, let me can I say okay. We'll choose that. And I'll switch those back to concrete. Okay, let me do one more bay with a big piaster resistance for today's class. Let me go through it. I'll put some beams in here. Again, I'll finish the beam system. They'll run in that direction. So I'm basically just filling out the bays. Okay. As a next step, what I would do is actually put a concrete floor slab on top of all that and sort of finish up that whole floor. When you create multi-story buildings with very regular structures, how you can sort of repeat the structure. Because the idea is, let me just turn off that work plane so we can, can't see it. We've been doing all this work to create the structure for level one. But in a lot of buildings, level two looks an awful lot like level one, and level three looks amazingly like level two, and so on. Okay, so here's how that works within a tool like this. Let me go over to the uh, elevation, and you'll see currently I have level three and level four defined. If I want to, I can go to the level two and define some more. I can offset them some, another 12 feet floor to floor. And I can add in some more floors. The numbering's off right now because I had done some things to sort of uh, mess things up, creating more levels earlier. But it's just creating additional floor levels. Okay. 
So I'm just adding floor levels to this thing. Let me even wait. You click the level tool and you can either draw them or what I did in this case is I just offset them from an existing one. Okay, and that's the roof level. Okay, now the reason I've created these different levels is if I would like to take my structure and copy it up to all those levels, I can do that. And here's how I would do that. I'm going to grab my structure. Here's the structure. I'll just grab all those different elements, kind of like I grabbed all those different elements and moved them into a work set. And what I'm going to do is just say, copy them to the clipboard. And once they're on the clipboard, I can do something called pasting them in an aligned way. And I can actually choose some levels. So if I want to take all those things and really put them on all these other levels, I can say OK. And after a little bit of work, pasting, pasting, pasting. And there's a lot of work. There's a lot of elements in there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let it finish. There we go. Kind of take a look at this. So pretty quickly, I've created the structural frame for an entire building. Now, there's a lot of stuff missing in here just because I jumped ahead of the copying. If we finished out those other bays and we went through and we put in the floor slabs, we'd actually have a very quick model of a seven-story building here. And that's actually uh, pretty quick, you know, considering we did all that in the last 40 minutes or something like that. Okay. But this is something now we can go ahead and take and go do some analysis on or really use this as our structural skeleton you know, as we do our architectural design.